All right. Um, do, do you want to skip this jack of all trades? No, you know, I, talk I'm going to talk. About, I'm going to talk about. We got it. We got a half hour. Uh, we can talk about this. Yeah, it was plenty of time. So uh, I checked out the the jack of all uh, trades documentary. Um, and it it deals with uh, an ex child actor from the 80s and 90s uh, named Stu Stu Stone, who also did like voice acting for like 30 different things like Magical School Bus and then like My Pet Monster cartoon, Alf cartoon. Like he did all these like more esoteric cartoons like in the 80s and 90s. Wild. And uh, I was like, wow, that's awesome. What are the res-? I, was, I thought was, what's residuals on that? Did you, did you have to work ever again when you worked on like 30 cartoons in the 80s and 90s? Anyway. Um, so he, his dad owned uh, one of the first big um in toronto owned one of the first big baseball card shops and opened like 10 of more of them sluggers sluggers like a chain of baseball card shops in uh what was that like uh late 80s like 88 or 89 what have you they open a, a shop and so he gets into it that's how i bonded with his dad um and then his dad then like two weeks after his bar mitzvah after Stu's bar mitzvah just leaves his family Leaves his wife and two kids and goes and starts another life, another family. And so this documentary had to do with that while also looking at him going back and finding his old baseball cards. This is what was more interesting to me. The family stuff was interesting to the extent they had to put some drama in there. Uh, but what's more interesting to me is that the fact that he found out all his baseball cards are worthless. All his upper deck cards, his box of scorecards, all the cards he had in, you know, his all his Jose Canseco cards, and he talks to Jose Canseco in the in the in the movie, which is one of the best segments because Jose Canseco is like a down to earth fun guy. He doesn't give a shit about no, anything. He's not down to earth, or that guy is fucking crazy. Well, I mean, like conspiracy theory, wild. Well, I mean, like he's down to earth in the sense that he'll talk about anything. He's okay. A, he's. I don't know if that's the term I'd use for Jose Canseco. He's the but. first guy that said all of us are on steroids, and he was right. And everyone called him a lunatic, sure. and he was right about. It. He wrote books about that in the early two thousands about that, and he was. He, that's what I mean when he's down the earth. Anyway, I don't know about was he a flat earther. Anyway, um, so he talks to, to Jose Canseco. He talks to uh, there's a Burbank is like the biggest video game. Excuse me, biggest baseball card and sports card. It's like 13 million cars. There's a place in Burbank that's a dealer. He talked to uh, people from Upper Deck, uh, newer people. Uh, he talked to just a lot of people. He talked to um, uh, there's a guy in Nevada knows Jose Canseco. That's a that's a uh, ba- baseball card collector. Has one of the biggest private baseball card collections. It's like millions of cards. So it was interesting because it was a moment in time, you know, late 80s, early 90s, where baseball cards was like the, the hottest collectible. It was it was everyone collected baseball cards. I started with my '87 Topps cards. Ian might be collected cards. Whoops, there goes my phone. Wow, I never did that in 800 episodes of podcast. Jose Canseco uh, on El Gore. El Gore was ahead of his time. I miss him. Rest in peace, buddy. Okay, he might not be. The, the steroids might have done something to his brain. That's not the point. <laughs> anyway, so I need an attorney. One more. I need an attorney pro bono. My landlord evicted me and would not let me take my chandeliers with me. Need your help to get them back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in the documentary he was fine anyway so there was a moment in time that like every kid collected baseball cards I had baseball cards stolen from me when I was in kindergarten from the 8th graders in the back of the bus kind of traumatizing because I was into it when I was like even 5 and 6 I was even before the big rush I was into this stuff oh no no I was like I was like no I was like first grade I was like no I was like 7 and and I, I remember the one guy Greg and Mark and then Mark claimed he didn't steal it it was that piece of shit Greg that stole my baseball cards including my Don Manley rookie I had or second year. Anyway, sorry. So, um, who would do that to a, like a fucking six-year-old? Titanic, Kid- 100 years. Wow, global warming could have saved the Titanic, sad to say. All right, e, but that's <laughs> not the point here. It's turning into a Jose Canseco bash fest here. And he's a bash brother. And he's still jacked, by the way. If, I mean, with steroids, you know, he uses them safely now in his 50s. Who cares? He's not playing baseball anymore. Um, so, the point is this, is that he goes, he goes to a card show. And tries to sell his, you know, he has boxes of, you know, here's the whole upper deck set. Here's this set. Here's this set. And he's saying, you know, this is worth, or, and even unopened, like, wax box sets, wax packs. He's like, oh, what do you want from these? Oh, they're worth, like, maybe $10, but I got to try to make money. So, you know, this box of, like, eight packs of cards, boxes, is worth, like, 20 bucks total. Right. To a, to a dealer at the show. And so he's, like, disappointed about it. Then he starts to research, you know, what happened in the 80s and 90s. And what happened was... 
this was a, a created bubble of, of collectability, mostly by Upper Deck when they got into the market in 89. Because when Upper Deck got into the market, they, they marketed themselves as the premier uh, sports card, if you remember that. Yes. They were glossy cards. They weren't like Topps cards were just like made on like, you know, dirt cardboard. Yeah, you know, I mean, they weren't they're, glossy. They're not even half the time. They're not even printed properly. Yeah. Th yeah. It's not high end. And, and at the time there was Don Russ, there was Fleer, there was uh score had just started, I believe. And you had tops and then you had Bowman as well. Bowman was getting back into the uh, trading cards after like being on the market for like 35 years or something from the sixties. So you had those big ones. And then upper deck comes in and says, you know what? We're going to charge $2 a pack, which back then was nuts. We're going to do the foil packs that you can't, unopen and put back in right and we're gonna put the fucking hologram remember the holograms in the back of each card mm -hmm. <coughs> which means you can't repro them uh, easily uh so they did all that and they created this boom and then part of that was putting ken griffey jr who hadn't even played a major league baseball game yet and he was the number one card literally number one for that first premier upper deck set that came out in 89 and that blew up the card market even bigger than it was because it was big already and then um they just started printing more and more stuff and then there was a collapse in the whole market within like four years. By like 93, there had already been like a collapse. And in the midst of all this, they talked to Don, our buddy Don West. Uh, is, he, is he a conspiracy theorist, Ian? Uh, no, Don, I, I mean, I don't know anything about that. But Don he West. was just talking about how like, they, remember watching watching them sell those card sets. I remember watching them. Oh, I mean, I know Don, I don't know, I don't know personal details. I was going to say, Don you West. want to derail the topic? I might. Anyway, Let's find out. Now he's going to do it. So, but there was a time where baseball cards was looked at as these collectibles because they were scarce from being thrown out by the parents back in the fifties. And really baseball cards blew up in the early fifties with collecting. There were baseball cards going back to the, you know, late 1800s tobacco cards, but Early 50s, I think they said 51, 52 tops was like when it really was established. This is a baseball card set. That was the modern baseball card. So um, I didn't know Don West did TNA. Yeah, since almost the beginning. Huh? Yeah. I've never really watched. Yeah. Then he left it. Is he, did he come back? No, I just a, he was on it for like over 10, 12 years. I just I typed in Don, Don West. I typed yeah. in Don West controversy. Didn't really get any controversy. Well, good for Don West. He can sell me those samurai swords and, 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 you know, that was the other guy. He didn't sell the samurai swords. He just sold, sold the beanie babies and the baseball card stuff. So the point is that you had this bubble of a market that took tons of people's money, uh, kids in particular, but adults as well. My dad was in it, but my dad was, my dad was buying more early eighties hockey cards that weren't uh, artificially, uh, you know, inflated for that. And that was one of the things they paused is like, well, Upper Deck started pumping out these cars because people thought it was an investment and they might have been pumping out allegedly just that Ken Griffey Jr. rookie car because that was the big hot item from the set. And and so it, it, it really talked about, it didn't talk about the, the danger uh, of it, but it looked at how many people made money off it. Like his dad made money off of, he even asked his dad at the end who hadn't seen like 20 years, like, do you, do you feel bad about making money off the kids coming into the store? And the dad's like, yeah, you know, it's a, it was a thing that happened. Like, all the companies made money off, off of the people thinking they're going to get rich holding on to these cars for 20 years. And now when you go to the swap meet, you can't give away. I, I, last time I went to the swap meet, there was, like, a whole table of, like, thousands of cards. Some were in the little case. I didn't even bother to check what they were because I knew they're all worthless. You know? Yeah. They I are. I mean... I, I was telling you about it yesterday when you brought it when you brought up the the documentary and that you had watched it, but um, I have like four or five friends who, within the past year, just got a wild bug about a year ago, and they started buying boxes of old wax baseball, packs, yeah, wax packs and stuff like that, um, and uh, they weren't doing it in hopes of making money, but they were just doing it because it was fun. But they're buying these boxes for. 10 20 bucks a box you know i mean there's like no value and that could be that. high yeah <laughs> um you know depending on what year it was and what card company it was uh they're so, on ebay for you can get for five bucks either an 87 tops don Russ, or fleer baseball wax pat lot pack lot and they'll send you one of the three random ones for five bucks plus four dollars shipping yeah. so nine dollars nine dollars for what is that what is in a wax pack box like 30 packs of cards 40 packs of cards 50 Something like that. I think it's thirty something. Is that insane? Yeah. When we were kids, we bought them for like seventy five cents a dollar a pack, something like that, for cards. They produced million, they uh, billions of cards. They produced not millions, billions of cards. They produced. There yeah. you go. Tell your friends about that that auction there. I mean, I I could have been claiming that they paid more. I think I think, um, 
I think my buddy Lincoln paid like ten dollars total shipped for like his first box of something. So the, the point is, they're worthless. That. I mean, yeah. that's the point. Nothing. No baseball card probably produced after eighty one is probably worth anything because there's too many produced. You know, if you get into like the basketball cards and hockey cards, there's a lot less produced. Like those, that first year was an 86, 87 Fleer uh, basketball cards are all worth a ton of money because they didn't produce basketball cards for like six years. So it's like the rookie card for like Jordan, Isaiah Thomas, Ewing, you know, Hakeem Olajuwon, like all these guys. And now what they do, even what I think is interesting, they have like collect that you can look up like 50s uh, baseball card pack. What these people do is they they get old cards, they repackage them and sell you a pack of cards for like two hundred fifty dollars, and like they'll produce like maybe you know a, a five hundred packs of them, and there might be a Mickey Mantle rookie card in like one of those packs, like they put them in there. That's it. but you're spending you're opening up new packs of cards of old cards that they throw in. That's like a thing now to get the, that gambling bug That's into. Crazy. They, but you can still buy like unopened, like I said, eighty six, eighty seven Fleer packs in the hope of getting like a Jordan rookie card, which is worth like mint, probably like fifteen grand or so, something like that. So I just think it's interesting, and it's always it's and to me it's a cautionary tale. Whenever we talk about uh, collecting in any form, whether it's uh, Beanie Babies or you know comic books, had a surge and crash right after baseball cards did, almost the same way. Within like three years, it rose and crashed in the uh, mid to late, uh, mid nineties. Um, this can happen with anything out there. It could happen with even old video games because there's a ton of them out there. It can happen with anything. It can happen with Star Wars figures. It can happen with anything. As, 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 when people don't realize after a time that this stuff is worthless or they hold on to it and don't get rid of it and 30 years later it can end up in that kid, kid's closet the same way you try to bring it back, uh, back out it's worthless. No, no matter what it is it could happen. So that, that's all I'm trying to say. I, it was very interesting just for that aspect. The family stuff your, your mileage will vary. Uh, it's on Netflix, though. Anything else to add, Ian? You any, did you collect any any sports card when you when you were a kid? No, I didn't. I, I did baseball, but then I switched to hockey. Remember, I got into like uh, Stadium Club, which was like the Topps premier card because they. I they, remember those. They got the glossy ID after Upper Deck, and then the market was tanked in like two years. But no, there used to be a baseball card shop uh, every other town. There used to be. Yeah, hey, we used to have a big one in Buffalo. I used to go there and buy like just stupid bullshit. But they, I mean, they had an NBA Jam machine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I used to buy like Magic cards and stuff there. But yeah, I remember. And now you don't really see that anymore. Is there one in San Diego? I'm gonna look it up I right now. I think there is because I think John went to one. Plus, you can buy that stuff at like comics and stuff. You can buy the boxes and whatnot. I think they get in uh, unlimited amount of like the the current boxes, which are all very expensive. There's Claremont Sports Cards. That's our that's lo- localish one. Yeah. Okay, that's what we got. There's this one that says Internet Internet Baseball Cards. No, we have one shop. Yeah. There's a there's a sports card collectible shop uh, near San Marcos, and and we have Claremont Sports Cards. So that's that. So that's like one, and there's also All Star Cards out east. That's not even San Diego anymore. I don't think so. There's like maybe one or you want to say two in all the county yeah. of San Diego and San Diego is a big county. So that, that, that there you have it. All right. So comic books sort of came back because comic books, you guys can read and enjoy right. kind of hard to look at a baseball card and do anything with it. After, put it in the spokes of your, of your, of your bike, which I did, by the way, I did that. You ever do that? Did you do mm-hmm. that when you were a kid? Oh yeah. I did that with like a, uh, I had whatever cards I could find. Yeah. I don't know. Like 87 tops. Yeah. So probably the most famous sports cards, 87 tops with yep. the, the wood baseball bat grain on there. You know, did you have a Billy Ripken fuckface card? Did you have, did you have one of those? No, I did not. <laughs> Remember that yes. one? Remember the error cards? Everyone was after the error cards back then? Oh, yeah. The misprints or the weird stuff? But only certain errors because plenty of those cards were just printed poorly. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about like the ones yeah. that were like just bad errors. Like they, they included stuff they shouldn't have. You know, they like, like they developed the guy's arm or something. I don't know. All right, that's it. Check it out. Jack of all trades. It's on Netflix.